All right. Hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is our BSPU call for November 7th. And uh, I'm going to start my Facebook Live here in just a second, as I always do. Again, something great for you to model and imitate is uh, to, you know, start doing consistently something on social media to attract attention. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And that will be 10 minutes or so where I share. Um, I'm actually going to talk about how to systematically grow your business by generating uh, from 10 to 1,500 real leads or applications per month. And that is a big spread, and I know that it is, but I'll share why in just a second. So let's go live. Hey, everybody, how are you? Rob Cosberg here with Bestseller Publishing. I'm doing uh, my Facebook Live for my BSP University call. And so I have my folks on Zoom from BSP University, but as I always teach them, I always do something on Facebook as well because I have a pretty good size audience there and I want to give you guys content. And then we're going to, after 10 or so minutes, we're going to switch off and we're going to go uh, right to uh, answering questions. So um, how can you systematically grow your business by generating from as few as 10 leads? And when I say leads, I'm not just talking about an email address. I'm talking about like what we would consider a lead as a full application to as many as 1,500 full applications every single month. Now, number one, I know that that is a really big spread. And the reason that I mention it uh, as being a really big spread is because some of you may hear something like 1,500 leads. You may think, well, look, that's ridiculous. I don't need that many leads. Uh, I couldn't handle that many people that I needed to, to make telephone calls to, et cetera. That's great. Some of you say, well, if I just had, you know, 10 20 people that every single month were coming to me, um, and, and the key phrase here is systematically, that were coming to me systematically, then I could grow my business because I sell something expensive like consulting services or I'm a financial advisor or I'm a coach and it's you know five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, and if you brought on 10 new clients a month, then that would be a six-figure month for you, et cetera. So here's the deal. Um, once a month, I go to a CEO roundtable here locally in Pasadena. And the reason that I'm even talking about this subject is because of a conversation I had with a CEO of a good-sized financial advisory firm that I was talking to this morning. And um, he was uh, sharing about, you know, uh, his clients and his business. And um, kind of off the cuff, I said, he said, you know, how do you attract clients? What do you do? And I said, well, most of what we do is we have systems set up with my books as well as my clients' books with online marketing that generate us on the low side about 10 complete applications a day. And an application to us, for those of you in BSPU, you know what that is, but for most people you don't. But an application is someone answering about eight to 10 questions. Uh, of course, their name, their telephone number, their address, but also information about have they written a book or not? Um, you know, what's their budget? Uh, are they interested in getting the book launched? Are they interested in media? Just a number of questions about their business and, and their book. We get on the low side, 10 complete applications a day. And on the high side, as many as 50 complete applications a day. Now, um, that 50 times a 30-day month is, is as many as 1,500 applications in a month. And for, for the most part, we don't get that many because we turn down our paid traffic because we can't handle we don't have the capacity to handle that many. So what do we do? Well, first of all, I could never take that many, nor would I want to try to take that many telephone calls. So I have uh, author development coaches right in that room there, um, two full-time guys, good friends of mine, really, really smart guys. And, and we do a consultative sales process with people that apply. Besides those two, I have uh, in the other room um, kind of a marketing assistant that helps set up calls, do follow-up, et cetera. So I need to keep those three guys busy with opportunities to close deals. That's something that systematically I need. What do I mean by that? Well, I need it because I have, sorry, I have sales guys that are counting on me for leads and I have 16 full-time employees that are counting on us having more business than just this month, but business next month and the month after and the month after. So what do we do? Well, we have systems in place. And you may say, well, at this point, Rob, the only system I have is, 
you know, I reach out to people in networking groups or I reach out to people over the telephone, et cetera. Okay. Then you have to start with your first system and getting your first system in place, which obviously for us is all about using a book, using your best selling book to start attracting leads on a continuous basis, day in and day out, rain or shine, whether you need the business or you don't need the business, you want systematically for the business to continue coming in. When your only system is word of mouth or referral type marketing, and that can be a system if you do it systematically, but when your only system is that, then you are always, unfortunately, left to the devices of the market and to your potential referral partners. And that's just not something that I wanted to leave myself in the hands of. So at this point, we can generate almost as many applications as leads as we want, 50 to 100, even in a single day. We've had days where we've generated over 100. The problem is we can't handle that many. Now, how did we do that? Well, we didn't do it in one day. And we don't do it just from one source. Uh, it's been said that I would rather have 50 places where I can get one lead than one place where I get 50 leads for my business. And I think you understand why that is. Because if something happens with that one source, then those 50 leads go away. If on the other hand, you're doing 10 things, 15 things to generate leads on a continual basis in your business, then you're going to be generating more leads than you need, which is going to give you the ability to raise your prices, to disconnect emotionally from the sale, which means you'll make more sales, okay? When you need to close the deal, what do you think they sense on the other end of the phone? They sense that you need it, and they're running because you're chasing them. So you have to disconnect emotionally. Guess what? If you have a call today at two o'clock Pacific, and then another call right afterwards at three o'clock Pacific, and another call at four, well, you want to close all those deals, but guess what? If you don't close the one at two, no big deal. If it's not a fit, uh, if it's not the right person, fine. You got to call three, you got to call four, you have calls for the next day, et cetera, et cetera. How do you do that? You do that with systems. So I'll, I mean, I talk about the systems all the time, but I'll share just a couple in a general sense so that you understand what it is that I'm talking about when I talk about this. One thing that we do on a regular basis with our clients' best selling books is that we use Facebook. Now, what am I doing right now? I'm doing something completely free. I'm doing a Facebook Live. And right now there's one people, one person, two people, three people on. A few hundred people will see it organically. But if I boost this post, then it will go out to a few thousand people for as little as $20 or $30. And if I offer good content, and if I share something that resonates with, the, with that person, and, and I talk about one of my client's best-selling books or some type of result that I helped a client get, then what's going to happen? I'm going to get a Facebook message. I'm going to get an email if I give my email address. If I give a website that people can go to to get more information, I'm going to send people to that website. And guess what? It costs only 20 or 30 bucks to do that. Now, if Facebook Lives, because I do them very infrequently, if they were my only source, of generating applications, would I be able to generate as many as 50 a day for my sales team? Of course not, no. But it's one thing that I do on a semi-frequent basis every week or every two weeks or sometimes two or three times a week. And every single time I do it, guess what happens? I get Facebook messages, I get emails, and I direct people back to my website. Some of those people become my clients. Some of those people reach out. And it's something that is almost free, but I do it consistently. What's something else that we do? Well, on a regular basis, we use paid Facebook traffic with our client books. So this is one of, one of my partners, Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. And we're, we do anthology compilation books with Kevin and with his team. We've also helped Kevin do his previous book, which this is Put a Shark in Your Tank. So on a daily basis, we spend money to tell people about the opportunity for Put a Shark in Your Tank or the next anthology book we send them to some type of interview that I did with Kevin Harrington where they have to opt in with their email address and their telephone number. We offer a free uh, ebook if they do that. So th they get sent the ebook automatically. It's not a free plus shipping. It's not a physical book we're sending. It's the ebook that they're getting. And every single day, I will get two, three, 
you know, sometimes as many as four or five applications for people that come through this funnel, that see the Kevin Harrington book, see that we are the company that works directly with Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, the guy that sold $5 billion in products, you know, the number three speaker in all the United States for business last year who speaks 75 times a year. They see my connection with that celebrity, if you will, and that we help them. And they think, you know what, if he helps Kevin Harrington, he can help me as well. And so they fill an application. And that gets me two, three, four, et cetera. Besides that, we do case studies. So I've, I've shown you guys at different times, Shanda Sumter. We help Shanda create her book, Core Calling. I'm doing her next book. And I'm also working with her husband on his book right now. Shanda uses this book, and I, I did a whole case study interview with Shanda, where she's using this book to generate over $100,000 a month in income using her book in conjunction with a free plus shipping funnel and various other offers for coaching. Six figures a month. So I did an interview on Zoom with Shanda. I shared some details. I asked her some questions. She shared the successes. And then what do I do? I send some paid advertising traffic to that case study, and I say, would you like to know how we help Shan to do her book, which is now earning her $100,000 a month in income? And guess what? Every single day, we get three, four, five, six applications a day for people that see this and say, wow, if he helped Shanda do her book and she's doing six figures a month with her book, then maybe he can help me and his team can help me as well. Now, I have a half a dozen other funnels. I do live events. Uh, personally, Bestseller Publishing does. I also speak at other people's events. In other words, I have a treasure trove of things that I do that bring in applications every single day that my sales guys take. Now, before, now don't, don't think, wow, 50 leads a day, or he's spending money on traffic, and how much is he spending? Put all that aside for a moment. Before any of that existed, it was basically me and a couple of people six years ago at Bestseller Publishing when I was getting started with it. I did all of the consultative phone appointments, every single one of them. I didn't have a sales guy. I didn't have anybody else that I trusted to do that. I did it. So if I did three or four calls in a day, that was a fantastic day. Most days it was one or two. So what did I do? Same kind of thing. I used these systems just to book my own schedule, just to book my own calendar. And what did I spend? Sometimes I only spent 20 or 30 bucks in a day on advertising to get myself two or three applications, phone appointments with people that I then closed and they became clients of Best Star Publishing as many as five or six years ago. So wherever you're at in your business, if you want to grow your business, then what do you have to do? You have to be systematic with it. You have to have systems in place in conjunction with your books, in conjunction with what you want to do to attract clients, which could be speaking engagements. It could be media and PR. Uh, I just spoke to a, a new potential client that I met at a, uh, at a sporting event with Warren Moon a couple of weeks ago. He has his own radio show and he doesn't have a book and he's a financial advisor. I said, dude, I said, <laughs> I did say dude, by the way, I said, look, whether you do your book with me and, and Bob, who was speaking to him, and my team or somebody else, I said, you have got to have a book because you are leaving seven figures a year on the table by not having a book because he's got the platform already. He's got a radio show. He's got tons of listeners, and he doesn't have a tool to take them from listener to client other than them like searching his telephone number, searching his website, and going through some you know, archaic way to find him and pick up the telephone and get and make a call with him. Most people don't want to do that. They want information first. They want to get a copy of his best selling book. They want to see that he's legitimate. So if you already have a platform, then your book can supercharge your results really, really fast. If you don't have a platform, fine. Then you begin using your book to build your platform via speaking engagements, Free PR like radio, TV, podcast, blogs, print, etc. In fact, I have an appointment tomorrow with uh, a writer for, from Entrepreneur Magazine that's going to be doing a piece on me and bestseller publishing. That's going to drive applications to us as well. I have a radio show interview today at 4 o'clock on the telephone. That's going to drive applications to us as well. So all of these things I have systematically in place to get as many as 50 applications a day for my sales team. I do podcasts usually twice a month. 
I do radio interviews once or so a month. I do some type of print interview. All this is free, by the way, free PR that I do. Besides that, I do free social media, et cetera. You can add one or two of these little elements in your business, and you can, if you do it systematically, meaning you do it every single day, you know, you do it every single week. You don't just do a flurry of activity and then you leave your social media forever. No, you systematically set it up and every single day you will get applications. And if it's just you and assistant, great. Then you only need maybe two or three or four phone calls in a day. And maybe that's even way too many for you. Maybe you would be happy with five in a week or 10 or 15 in a month if they were qualified. Then guess what? You don't have to do very much, but you still need systems in place. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I'm going to switch over to BSPU and answer a bunch of, bunch of questions for them because I know they got a ton of questions. If you have any questions, then go to, uh, I'll put a link here in uh, the bestseller publishing uh, on this page for the video. Let me go ahead and pull it up right now so you guys can get it. And you can go and get all the information you want at this link. And if you want to go through our process and see what it's like, fantastic. I'll put a link right there. You can do that. So great. Thanks so much. You guys have an awesome day. Talk to you again soon. All right. There you go, BSPU. What did I talk about? I talked about creating systems. And one of the simple systems is exactly what I did. Just every single week doing some type of social media that's free to build your following. So I got a couple of questions here. Uh, I want to answer those questions. And then Scott um, sent me a bunch of questions <clears throat> that he wanted to answer. Uh, one of, Scott's one of our done for you clients. And I, I asked Scott permission if I could answer some of these questions on the BSPU call because I felt, felt like it would be helpful for some of you guys for me to answer these questions um, rather than just doing it privately. So let's see. Um, I do have a question here. It says, hey, buddy, I have an interesting situation. And I'm not sure who this is. It's W Volpe 3. Uh, <laughs> I'm in an interesting situation. I was escaping a Ukrainian civil war in 2015. And after arriving in Ecuador, I bought your program. Soft launched my book last year, went to number two. Congratulations. I'm an international project manager and it was a project management book. Awesome. I've done several of those very successfully. I was working with John Ireland, but Ukraine took a toll. I didn't know. And I ended up in a wheelchair. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. However, I'm back. I missed three PM calls, five back then. So can you tell me my steps for media promotion? I can't really tell you. There's a lot of steps in media promotion. So what you need to do is you need to, and it's Bill. Okay, Bill. So what you need to do, Bill, is you got to jump back into the publish my bestseller or, or BSPU so you can go through the steps of promotion. Uh, you've already promoted your book, and it was a couple of years ago, it looked like, and it, and it hit number two, so congratulations. You can continue promoting it, and, and you should, but you also want to use your book for some of the things that I just shared. Selling your book is, is one way to, get, to make some money, and I know some of you are, are, are authors that are interested in the royalties, and that's fantastic. Here's the thing. If you have something more expensive to sell besides your book, then what should your focus be? Your focus should be selling that thing. So if you are a project management consultant, then you should be selling those services, which you're going to get instead of a, a $10 royalty check, you're going to get a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, who knows, uh, $20,000 or more. One of the clients that come to mind that I did a book for is Ted Coleman. I actually spoke to Ted about two weeks ago because he's asked us to promote a second book. And I share about Ted. I mean, we helped Ted launch his book, which was on agile consulting, which is kind of like project management. You, you know more about that than me. And just from the launch of the book, Ted did about $200,000 in new client business. And because of speaking engagements that he did all from the book. And that was just from the book launch. Since then, it's exploded. So what you need to focus on are the bigger checks, not the smaller checks. And 25K a month is what you're getting for project management. So you just need, you know, you need one extra client is 300K a year uh, or 25K a month for two months, three months, four months. So now you have to shift gears from promoting the book to now using the book to promote you. Okay. That's what Taki does. That's what Harrington does. That's what Shanda does. That's what I do. That's what all my clients do. In fact, I just did an interview with Linda Libertor. We launched her book. Um, and uh, she used her book to get 
uh, amazing media placements. We got her some of the media placements as well, TV, radio, et cetera, that our team booked for. She then got some speaking engagements and she became the um, property manager of the year in her industry, which has exploded her business. I mean, she manages over a thousand properties uh, in her property management company and she became manager of the year, property manager of the year. So again, now she's using her book to attract high end, high ticket clients for both coaching and uh, training of the staff as well as to actually get their properties managed. So you got to do the exact same thing. Uh, you say, yep, yep. Is there a magic recipe I'm missing? I've had press before even with Ukraine, but I'd like to do it at will. So, you know, you're, the, the, the questions are a little general, Bill. I mean, they're, you know, it's like asking me, you know, what, what's a good system to put in place to get clients? Uh, there isn't one. There's a, a thousand. So I named a few just a minute ago, uh, social media, Facebook lives, paid advertising via Facebook and Instagram, um, using your book to get speaking engagements, using your book to get media, PR, et cetera, on a regular basis, and then driving people back from your book to a website, a telephone number, something where people can then take the next steps with you. So you're not missing a magic recipe. You're, you're, you know, the, the recipe in general is book, launch the bestseller for credibility, get PR and media for additional credibility, and then everything that comes thereafter is about using the book to drive people back to you as the expert. It's not about the book anymore, it's about you. You are the man, you are the thought leader, you are the expert. Hopefully that makes good sense to you. Uh, and there's, you gotta get back, you know, it's been a couple of years, so you gotta jump back into the, the training. And if you go through the training, you're going to see a ton of stuff in the training on using the book to get speaking engagements, using your book to, to drive leads, how to close leads. All of that is in our, our training area and all of that is accessible to you. So thanks for the questions though. Great, great, great questions. Um, you say, ah, good. Awesome. So let me jump into some of these questions that, that um, Scott has asked that I think would be helpful for you guys. I'm going to read through this as I kind of answer it. Uh, Scott, I hope that's okay with you. Uh, if it's not, or if at any point you don't want me to read it, then let me know that. But it's pretty simple stuff. Um, so um, Scott's asking, I'm speaking today with a lady uh, who's helping me with my website. Uh, I'd like some information about, you know, uh, what the website, website should be. Okay. Now, very, very generic question, which I can't answer a generic question specifically. But here's what I'm going to tell you about a website. The website is not about the book. The website is about you and your services and the magic that you perform. The book is about you and, and your credibility and authority. So you want to use the book, images of the book, et cetera. But, you know, do you need a website just for your book? I mean, you can have a web page, like one single page for your book, which is totally fine. But you don't need multiple pages for your book. One page is all that you need. The rest of your website is about you. And even when people request your book, ultimately, you want to get them back to you. You want to be the one that is communicating with them because that's where the money and the opportunity is. Um, let's see. I have no ad in my book for my services or even contact information because I was waiting on the website first. Now it'll be done. Advice about the ad and contact info would be great. Okay, so awesome question. So here's my recommendation. You should have, ideally, in every single chapter, some type of call to action for additional help that you can offer someone based on probably two or three things. What do I mean by that? So uh, let's say, you know, my newest book that I'm doing is on publishing. And I'll pick two or three things that I think would be helpful to my clients. One of those things will be how to use your book to generate leads. Another one would be how to use your book to generate speaking engagements. Another one might be to how to get your book done quickly, you know, e even if you're totally stuck. And so I can take those three things and I can match them up with various chapters in the book. So if I do a chapter on, you know, uh, how, to, how to build out your own hybrid ghostwriting program or how to create content quickly, then at the end of the chapter, I might say something like, um, if you're interested, 
I've created a three video series or a video series or one video, whatever, um, on how on, on uh, the details of creating your own hybrid ghostwriting program. If you're interested in that, just click the link and you'll be taken directly to it. And so when they click the link, if they're reading a digital book, otherwise they'll have to type it in if they're reading the physical book, then they're gonna go to my website, which is going to ask for their name and email address in exchange for the videos. Maybe it's a cheat sheet of some kind or a template of some kind that I'm offering them. Those actually work great. So when you say, you know, I don't have an ad in my book or information, always think what additional information would be attractive to my reader that would take them off the book to my website where they're actually willing to engage with me via their name and their email address. So if you can create a simple template, if you can create, you know, a, a, a simple video or two that will enhance your, your content in your book then those things will, someone reads something, they're gonna be driven to your website and that's where you can start engaging with them. You can't engage with them when they're reading your book. Uh, it's one-sided. On your website, you can, e you know, they give you your name and email address, now you have them on your list and you can start engaging with them. Uh, general question, should I get a new phone number to put on my business cards and an ad in the book? I really do not think it's wise just to give everyone my cell phone number. I would completely agree with that. Um, yes, I mean, in some ways, we're talking about a whole new consulting business for you, right? It's, you're using your book to start a whole new uh, line and, and lead generation income source. So yes, um, do you need to have your telephone number in the book itself? No, because the odds of someone actually calling you because your telephone num number there is really, really low. People are afraid of getting on the telephone and being sold. They're afraid of that but they do want additional information. So if you give them various ways to get additional information on your website, then, then they're gonna do that. And then you can take them and warm them up to the point they're ready for a telephone call. Just like the applications that we get, those people are now ready for a telephone call. So hopefully that makes sense. This is, these are all really great, great questions that I think are applicable to everybody here. That's why I'm answering them. Um, you're, you asked a little bit about contract stuff. That's really way outside of my expertise, so I, I'm, I'm not gonna answer that. I know that I gave a tip on a video about some language to include in a contract, but I assure you uh, it's best to talk to an attorney. It's best to like talk to an expert in that regard of which I am not. Um, you've seen the stuff that we do. I mean, for the most part, our contracts aren't contracts because we're not keeping rights, royalties, control of our clients' books. And we've never had a problem where, where people just didn't pay or decided not to pay. So we haven't had to go after people or whatever. Um, that doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't have, and probably starting next year, we might go to a little bit more ironclad type contract. In your case, with what you're doing, you got you to gotta get some legal advice there about the contract stuff. Okay, um, similarly, you said, um, sh I have no idea what to charge, uh, whether it be for speaking engagement, a webinar series, nor any coaching that I may do. Okay, so how do you charge? That's really, really great. I'll give you a general template on how to charge um, for your coaching and your consulting, um, but this is completely up to you. Here's, the, here's, what I'm, here's what I find nine times out of 10. I find nine times out of 10 that you will grossly undercharge what your value is. And for all those of you listening, that's probably the case that you're at if you're a consultant of some kind is that you're grossly undercharging. So here's the way that I think of it as a rule of thumb. When it comes to coaching and consulting, ideally, whatever they're going to pay you, you want to be able to give that person a 10 to 1 return on investment. So if the magic that you can impart to somebody is worth as much as $250,000 in a year, then that's worth $25,000 uh, or more. Um, so that, that 10 to 1, now in, in some cases you may say, well, I don't know how to really judge that. Well, you, you have to. You have to figure this out based on the clientele that you've helped, right? You have to be able to create a result in someone's life that, you know, creates something for them 
And if it's not monetary, then it could be something else. It could be time value. It could be relationship value. Someone that is a relationship coach may say, well, you know, this isn't about money. And I would say it is about money because the most expensive thing that anybody can ever do in their life is go through a divorce. Divorce costs more than $250,000 for a business owner. It could cost hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. So, you know, what's the value of keeping a marriage together or keeping a relationship together? So you've got to find a way to put a monetary value on how you're helping somebody. And then my suggestion is that you, you get 10% of that. If you can help someone create a $100,000 um, business uh, and you can do that, you know, by teaching them over a period of three months, then that should be worth 10 grand over that three month period. Does that make sense? So that's the best way I can explain to you. There's a lot more that you have to think about. And I know at our December 1st and 2nd event, we're going to be talking about some of these elements. So hopefully that'll help you as well. But that's how you should charge. Never, never, never think charge hourly. Uh, your time is invaluable hourly. You can never get an hour back. An hour is more valuable than anything else in your life. I mean, what if you only had an hour to live? What, what's the value of an hour then? So don't think in terms of charging hourly. That's a huge mistake. Think in terms of the result that you bring to somebody's life and what the value is in that result. Uh, good, good stuff. Um, I have zero testimonials to put on my website. I know that someone on the video said, I may even need to pay some people to do them for me, um, but ideas here appreciated. So I don't know, never pay for a testimonial. I wouldn't do that. That, that doesn't seem to be ethical to me. Um, but here's what you could do and what I recommend. Go and help someone to create value in their life for free and then get that person to give you an amazing testimonial. So in other words, if you're looking at mentoring or coaching or consulting in some way, find two or three or five people that over a period of a month or two months, you can create some kind of great result in their life. And we're talking about foundation level stuff, right? You have no testimonials. You need some. Great. At that foundational level, if you don't already have people that you can pick up the telephone and say, hey, remember I did that great thing for you? Would you mind just putting that on video and sharing it? If you don't have people like that, then you have to create people like that. How do you do that? Do it for free. Just, just get in there and change somebody's life for free and then get that person to share about the life change on a video, in a written testimonial, all of the above. So do it for free. Uh, do not pay for that. That's completely unnecessary. The only thing... And there are celebrity endorsements that you might pay for, like Kevin Harrington will do a celebrity endorsement, and, but that is not what we're talking. We're talking about a testimonial about like how you've actually helped somebody in a way in their life. You never want to pay for that. Do the work for free, change their life, and then get them to share about it. Um, let's see here. Um, should I consider approaching bookstores to carry my book? Um, here's my honest opinion on that. Um, I'm doing a book for a local guy here in Pasadena. Very rare for me. Uh, most of my clients, as you know, are all over the world. Um, and that local client is super, super connected with some really, really high level people that could mean dozens of books for me in the future. So here's what I suggested to him. Um, there's like a famous local bookstore here in Pasadena that's been around forever. You can actually um, pay a small fee to do a book launch party and to um, have this bookstore carry your books, which gives incredible uh, credibility in Pasadena. Now, this person is a local business owner, which means that he does not do business even as far as San Diego or 100 miles away. All of his business is local. So it is of great value for him to be in the bookstore locally and for him to be associated with this famous old bookstore. It's a hundred year old bookstore. It's not Barnes and Noble or anything there. This is a fame, you've never heard of it before. So my stock answer is you don't need bookstores for, for what you're doing. But I just shared like two minutes of why a local client could get some value from a bookstore. So you have to answer that for yourself. If you see a value because you're a local business owner, Let's say that you're a local financial advisor or a local realtor. I know you're not, Scott, but I'm answering this for everybody. Then, yes, being in kind of a, the local bookstore and doing a local book signing and getting that celebrity and, and, and credibility could be of great benefit to you. 
But if you're like me and you do business all over the world, 13 different countries, hundreds of clients, applications every day, I don't care if my books are in bookstores or not. Absolutely meaningless to me. I can do a Facebook Live and get more people on a Facebook Live interested in my book in 10 minutes than you know, doing a, a, a bookstore that'll take me days to arrange and hours to drive to and all that stuff. So, so in general, bookstores are unnecessary unless there's some specificity um, of reason locally. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you also have some questions about uh, getting the book in hardback and getting the book in large print. So the answer is yes to both of those things, but they require additional work, which is additional cost. So large print or, or a larger print means reformatting, and there's a cost for that. Getting your book in hardcover means an entirely different platform and formatting and design process, so we charge additional for that as well. Generally, what BSP focuses on does are beautiful soft cover books and digital. Uh, this is what you wanna mail out, this is what you wanna send, uh, when you send for speaking engagements or opportunities for coaching, consulting, et cetera. Uh, in some cases, you may want a hardcover because it is more, you know, it has a little bit more prestige. You know, I, people send me books in the mail all the time. Uh, and, it's, and, and generally, they'll send me hardcover because it does give a little bit more panache. Your decision to do that. So, you can, yes, we can do that, but there is an additional cost there. Um, you asked about a virtual assistant, finding one, uh, is it appropriate, what do they cost? Here's my suggestion. There are websites that you can go to. You can even just Google uh, virtual assistant and you'll come to things like Odesk and, and other, um, you know, big um, uh, web programs that will connect you. Um, but my suggestion is to find somebody locally, you know, find you know, find a mom that, uh, you know, wants to be home with the kids, uh, but, but needs a few hours, you know, when the kids are napping or whatever, that, you know, wants to work and earn some extra money. Um, I have a, a, a couple of, um, uh, I have one client that ran a big virtual assistant business, and I have another buddy of mine who, uh, one of his employees runs a kind of side hustle virtual assistant business, and both of them their businesses were built on kind of single moms and, and, you know, older moms who wanted to go back to work that like were super skilled and really smart, but didn't want to like go back into the corporate world, didn't want to sacrifice the, their family life for that. So I would look for people locally that you feel like could be a good fit and want to pick up an extra three, four, five, six hours and make a few phone calls for you and send out a few books. So um, that's my suggestion on that. Uh, plus, you're helping the local economy, and you you got people right there instead of you know somebody that's hundreds or even thousands of miles away. Great questions, by the way, that we're we're running through. Hopefully, this is helpful to everybody. Um, you say I'm completing my audiobook on Friday. What do I do with the recordings? <laughs> Create MP3 CDs. How many? Get them done. Where? What should I expect them to cost? So, um, I you know MP3s and CDs and stuff. You know, if, if you're talking about wanting to do your audiobook, then you need to go to ACX. I think it's ACX or ADX.com. Let me just do a quick search on it. Um, Audible in conjunction with ACX. It's ACX.com, which is Audiobook Creation Exchange. That's where you can get the audio version of your book done. If you've already created the recordings, then it's probably like in an MP3 format. And I think that there's a step-by-step -step process of downloading it and, and all of those things. Obviously, you know, we don't do the audiobooks, so we're not really experts on that. But uh, ACX is the, is the best place to do it. And it says a local pro did your audiobook for you, which is awesome. Uh, very cool. Uh, Rob mentioned that I should create a success pack or power pack. I've heard him say this many times that one of the free items that should include a CD of myself doing some kind of a presentation. Should I go create one? If so, just do it in my home, find some way to do it in front of a live audience. Could I just put the audio book on the CD in its place? <clears throat> so um, yes to all of those, you could. Um, someone's going to say, well, what is the success pack and what does that mean? So let me give you a five-minute explanation of it. Uh, hopefully, I can do it faster than five minutes. When you do a speaking engagement, many times at that speaking engagement, you're going to have people that are listening to you speak, see you're a best-selling author, and they want to engage with you.
But if you don't get the lead right there and then, they're going to go off on their everyday job and life, and they're going to forget about you, sometimes as quickly as an hour or two later. And they're going to get caught up in doing what they do, even though they felt like, man, this is the right person to help me with X, Y, Z. So you've got to collect leads there. How do you collect leads? You collect leads by offering something of tremendous value to the audience. I call that a success pack. So let's say that you're doing a speaking engagement on financial advice and you have a room of 200 people and you speak for 45 minutes and you dazzle them with how smart you are and, and they know you're a best-selling author and they see you standing on the podium above the crowd, right? So they aspire to that. A lot of this is subconscious, but it's true. And they want to know, gosh, I, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll go talk to them afterwards, but you know, 200 people, you want to collect leads. How do you do that? So I always suggest you close, and I've had clients do this and close 80% of the room as a lead generation uh, system. I always suggest that at your close, you say something like, well, you know, I've given you the best stuff I can in the last 45 minutes, but you and I both know that this topic of financial advice is, it's monstrous, it's huge. There's no way that I could teach you everything you need in 45 minutes. So here's what I've done for you. I've created my secrets of financial advice success pack. And here's what I wanna offer you. I wanna offer you three really cool things. Number one, I wanna give you a physical copy, a real copy of my best-selling book. Yes, that, speaking to you now, yes, that's gonna cost you a couple of bucks, two, three bucks to print, but it's really desirable. Now you may say, well, I'd rather sell my book. Okay, then sell your book um, and collect leads when you sell your book. I'm just telling you how to do the success pack thing. I'm gonna give you, so back to the close of the speech. I'm gonna give you um, a physical version of my best-selling book. Besides that, I created a CD and it's 30 minutes of me teaching on the five biggest mistakes that people make that cost them millions of dollars in their financial life. Last but not least, I'm going to give you something that is the most valuable thing I can give you. And that is, I'm going to give you 30 minutes of my time in a success, financial success discovery call. So here's the thing. For those of you that are interested in getting my book, I didn't bring 200 books to give out. I'm going to have to ship these to you. So right now, um, there are uh, some assistants that will hand out a, a sheet where I want you to put your name, telephone number, answer the questions, and you're going to have like two or three questions on it. And then every single one of you that, that fills out the sheet, I'm going to mail the book and the success biggest mistake CD uh, and contact you about your discovery call, okay? So then the, the sheets get passed out, people answer the questions, and then they hand in the sheets. Now, if somebody doesn't answer the questions, do they get a book? No, they don't get a book. Because th the questions that you're gonna ask are gonna pertain to qualifying questions of somebody that could be a good fit. So if you're a financial advisor, what might those questions be? Well, you might ask them, how much in investable assets do you have? zero to 100,000, 100 to 500, or over 500. And if they put zero, then you may say, I'm not gonna call them back first. If they put over a million, then you might say, you know what? I'm gonna call them back first, right? So you are qualifying the leads based on the way they're answering the questions. So you are exchanging the, the book and your CD, which might cost you $3.50 plus a, a buck in, in postage to mail in exchange for this sheet that, that is completely filled out. Five bucks a lead, let's call it. What I found is that those leads are incredibly valuable when you're speaking to your ideal audience. And you should be able to, in an audience of 100 or 200, earn as much as 50 to 100,000 or more in an audience that size if you're selling something of reasonable value meaning that your thing is worth 5,000, 10,000, et cetera. If you're a financial advisor, it may be annuities, that kind of thing. So do you need a CD for this to work, Scott? No, 
You don't. You can just make it a book and your discovery call. I like the CD because when you tell them that there are five big mistakes that can cost you X, Y, and Z, people's ears perk up and they're like, I, I want to know what that is. And it, it's another modality. They may never listen to it, but it's another modality and it adds value. You can create these things. Um, I used to use a site. Uh, what is it? Kunaka. Kunaka. Um, which is K-U-N-A-K-I dot com. And this is a, uh, it's an ugly site. I'll put it in the chat box. But it's a, it's a one-off way to get CDs done. You just upload the MP3, and then you can get CDs sent and mailed to people really cheap. Kunaki dot com, K-U-N-A-K-I dot com. By the way, there is a training uh, in the BSP area on this stuff. So uh, let's see if we can wrap this up. And there might be a couple. I got a private message here. Um, and the answer is, is yes to that, Carl. I will be uh, doing the event again. Um, did you already RSVP to the event uh, and that you were coming? Uh, if you did, then we'll take you off that list and we'll open it up to somebody else. So let me know if you did RSVP to that. Uh, and no problem, we'll do another one next year, uh, early next year, in fact. Um, so don't worry about that. No big deal. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, when to create a form to capture prospects, contact info at the end of events. What questions should I ask? Rob mentions having three. That's going to be completely dependent, Scott, on um, what the best qualifying questions are for you. So you want to ask questions that qualify somebody to be a participant in whatever it is that you're selling. For publishing, I may ask, have you already written a book? If the answer is yes, give me the name of the book. I may ask what, what you most want uh, to be a bestseller, to get on radio, TV. And then I may ask, you know, what is your budget for doing this? Zero to 10,000, 10 to 20, 20 and above. Something like that, you know, some kind of financial question. I may not put dollar amounts in it. I may say a uh, budget is a uh, very minimal, uh, budget is modest, budget is I want to get this done and I want it to be excellent, turnkey. So, but you need some type of financial type question in there to be able to qualify people. Uh, let's see, greatly appreciate speaking with, uh, maybe per question asked Rob. Okay, I think we're good then. I think I answered all your questions. Scott says, thank you, Rob, for these answers. Great job. Thank you, brother. My pleasure. Thanks for asking them. I think that they were helpful to everybody. Uh, let's see. Bill asked one more thing, and then we'll go ahead and close out. In almost every industry, says there's data on cost. For example, in the USA alone, in the IT industry, most projects are challenged or failed and cost $80 billion a year, three hundred k a year, means I only saved you $3 million on your project. Check the data. I've used it many times. Um, yeah, I, um, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, the data is cool. Uh, and certainly with, with my program, it's a little bit different. So you're right. Um, you can use the data, but you also want to think in terms of specifically what it is that you are helping people with. So you're right. If, if, you know, if working with you means a failed project that could mean $3 million down the drain versus a successful project, which could mean an upside of $30 million, then, wow, you can charge $300,000 to $3 million to somebody that's offering something like that. So I love that. My point is 10X is a is good number and people can make an argument for that. 100% agree. It's a good argument to, to make because if you really do create that kind of value, then you're, you're worth one-tenth of what you're going to save somebody or what you're going to make somebody. And in many cases, you're worth many, many more times that as well. Because if you can take somebody's business to the next level, put them in business, et cetera, then, you know, what's the value of that? Not just financially, but like to their family, to their peace of mind, to their children, to their health, et cetera. So anyway, guys, you're great. All this has been recorded. So if you missed any part of it, don't worry. It'll be up in the next few days. Hopefully that's really helpful. Uh, love you guys. Love doing that. Uh, Mark says, hey, Mark, how are you, brother? Uh, great to be on the call again. Some fantastic nuggets of practical wisdom that you shared today. Looking forward to getting my book done with your team. Yes, you're right there, baby. Let's get it done. You guys are awesome. Uh, thanks for trusting in uh, bestseller publishing and 
Uh, thank you for trusting in me and the team. You guys have a great day. Talk to you next week.